In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can set up Nextcloud on a Synology NAS. Now, before we get started, I just want to mention two quick things. The first is that I have written instructions for this in the description of the video, and you're going to have to follow them because we're going to use a Docker Compose file that I'll have in those written instructions. And the second is that we'll be utilizing Portainer to set this up. So I have a video and a written tutorial that I'll leave in the description of the video on how you can set up Portainer on a Synology NAS. But due to how Nextcloud works, we're gonna have to set up a database and we're gonna have to set up the actual application. And for that reason, it's just a lot easier in my opinion to use Portainer. So now that we got that out of the way, we're gonna quickly look at how you can set up Nextcloud. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to log into DSM, open up file station, and then you're going to select the Docker folder and you're going to create a Nextcloud folder inside of that. Now take note of the Nextcloud case that you're using, meaning if you do everything lowercase or you're using a capital N for Nextcloud, what you're going to have to do is in a later step, you're going to have to update that. And I'll point it out then, but in this case, I'm just going to use Nextcloud with a capital N written out. And then inside of that folder, we're gonna create two folders, one called config, all lowercase, and one called database, all lowercase. Now at this point, this is where all of our Nextcloud data will exist. So if you ever wanted to migrate this to an external server somewhere, you'll take these two folders and then you're gonna be able to migrate them to that device. And as long as you set up Docker and you use those as the volume mounts, you will be able to set up this Docker container on a different device and it'll function exactly as it does on this. So that also means if you want to back up this container, you have to back up this Nextcloud folder. So this entire Nextcloud folder is what you're going to have to back up if you want to ensure that all of your important Nextcloud files are properly backed up. After that's created, we're going to log into Portainer. And like I said earlier, if you don't have this set up, I have a tutorial in the description of the video that will show you how to set up Portainer. But the process is extremely easy. And as soon as you set it up, we're gonna select stacks on the left-hand side, and then we're gonna create a new stack by using the add stack button. Now, as soon as you do that, we're gonna set the stack name as Nextcloud, all lowercase. And then we're gonna go into the written instructions, copy the uh, Docker compose file that we're gonna use, and we're gonna paste it in here. Now, the thing that I wanna point out is that with this Docker compose file, we are creating two separate containers. So what I mean by that is we're gonna have a MariaDB database container, which will contain all of the database information for the Nextcloud application, as well as all the files and everything that it needs. And then we're gonna set up the Nextcloud application container as well. So these two containers will work together and what you'll see is in this Docker Compose file, we have a MySQL root password and a MySQL password. So you wanna go in here and you wanna change this to be something different, something that you'll know and only you'll know. Um, and then at the bottom there, you're gonna see that the password is set on the database itself, but on the bottom, we're actually specifying what database we wanna use. So inside of there, you have to make sure that the MySQL password will match for the database container at the top and the Nextcloud container at the bottom. The next thing that I wanna point out is the volumes for both the database container and the Nextcloud container. And inside of that, what you're gonna see is for the database container, it will be set as volume one, Docker, Nextcloud database. Keep in mind, like I said earlier, Nextcloud has a capital N, so if you have a capital N, you have to make sure that you use it that way. It is case sensitive. And the second thing is that if you're using a volume that's different than one, you have to make sure that you update that volume one to be whatever volume number you're using. Now that's the database container. At the bottom, you're gonna see it's volume one, Docker, Nextcloud config. Now these two paths, this is where all of the data will be written for this Nextcloud container to the actual Synology NAS inside of FileStation. That's where all the important data will exist. If you upload files, that's where all the files will exist. So you have to make sure that you back that data up and also just be aware that if you ever move this Nextcloud database and Nextcloud container to a separate device running Docker, you just have to utilize both of those folders and all of the data will migrate there and you'll be using Nextcloud the same way you're using it on your NAS. Now for the most part, everything else can stay as is and at the bottom, you're gonna have the option deploy the stack and you can select deploy the stack and what it's gonna do is it's gonna create two containers. So like I said earlier, we have a database container and an application container. We will have two containers. They both will be functioning. So if you have Nextcloud running, you have to ensure that the application 
and the database are both running. If they're not, you are going to run into issues. Now at this point, as long as everything is running, the Nextcloud database and container have been set up properly. So if you open up a web browser window, you will be able to navigate to your Synology NAS's IP address and port 8080. And when you get there, you're gonna have to create an admin account. So when you go through, set this up to be whatever you want it to be, and then you're gonna have to select that install option. Now in the next section, it's gonna ask you to install the recommended apps, or you can skip this step. Now these are applications that you can use inside of Nextcloud. You do not have to install these, but they are the recommended apps that they recommend you use. So you can select that option or you can skip this. You can always go back at a later time and add these applications if you'd like. However, this will just bundle them all together and install it then. So as soon as you select that option, Nextcloud will be ready to use and you should get to the dashboard. It might take a minute or so, but you should get to the dashboard and you will be able to utilize it. So at this point, everything is set up, everything is configured, you can go forward and use Nextcloud. The only thing, the final thing that I wanted to touch on is that you're most likely gonna wanna be able to access Nextcloud remotely. So if you do wanna access Nextcloud remotely, you will not be able to use something like Synology's Quick Connect because this is not a first party Synology application. So what you're gonna to have to do, there's really two options. The first is the one I recommend, but there are two options, we'll go through both. And the first option is setting up a VPN server. Now you do not have to set up the VPN server on your Synology NAS. However, if you don't have anything else that will run a VPN server, meaning if your router doesn't run it or you don't have a Raspberry Pi that you wanna use, you can set up an open VPN server on your Synology NAS and it does function well. I have a tutorial that I'll leave in the description of the video that you can follow along. It is in DSM-6, but it's the exact same process in DSM-7. And after it's set up and configured, if you're outside of your local network, you'll have to first connect to that VPN, and then as soon as you do, you can go through and access Nextcloud. Now inside of that VPN server umbrella, we have Tailscale as well. So Tailscale is a zero configuration VPN, I have a tutorial for that as well. I'll leave that in the description. So if you don't want to port forward or you can't port forward, Tailscale is a great option. So those are the two VPN servers that I'd recommend you using. If you don't have a router or Raspberry Pi or something else that you want to use, those can both be hosted on your NAS and they will both function basically exactly the same. They are just different products. The second way would be by utilizing a reverse proxy. So I do have a tutorial I'll leave in the description of the video for that as well. And that will basically just allow you to use whatever domain name you have, or if you have a DDNS host name, you can use that and you'll be able to access your uh, Nextcloud instance from outside of your local network. While I don't recommend that one as much as a VPN, if you must do it, this is certainly an option. So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. This really just brought you through the process of installing and configuring Nextcloud, and then just looking at two quick ways that you can access Nextcloud from outside of your local network. But if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments of the video. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks guys.